Good morning, and welcome to St. Paul, United Church of Christ, Keokuk. It's creatures small, creatures short and tall, creatures come now and praise Lord. Young creatures, old creatures, hot and cold creatures come now and praise the Lord. Sing praise to the Father, sing praise to the Son, Spirit. Sing praise to the Spirit who makes all creatures one. Sing praise for the goodness of what the Lord has done. Let all creatures praise the Lord. Low creatures, high creatures, flying in the sky, creatures come now and praise. Why creatures, brown creatures, all around the world, creatures come now and praise the Lord. Sing praise to the Father, sing praise to the sons. Sing praise to the Spirit, who makes all creatures one. Sing praise for the goodness of what the Lord has done. Let all creatures praise the Lord. Day creatures, night creatures, left and right creatures, come now and praise the Lord. Near creatures, far creatures, anywhere you are, creatures, get now and praise the Lord. Sing praise to the Father, sing praise to the Son, sing praise to the Spirit who makes all creatures one, sing praise for the goodness of what the Lord has done, let all creatures praise the Lord. Um, children come forward for the uh, children's sermon. Maggie, take a bow. Very good. Very gracious. <laughs> you did a nice job with that song. Mm-hmm. Okay, what did Maggie sing about this morning? Giving praise. And we give praise to God. When we pray to God, we give praise. That's one of the ways in which we pray. And there are lots of reasons to give praise. There are all kinds of them, as a matter of fact. Let's take a little walk over here just to uh, go through some of them. Praise is only one part of uh, praying, but uh, we can go through the other parts once in a while here and there. Very good. It is good also to emphasize to God that you are praying and that means you need to make noise, make a joyous noise. That's what the symbols are. Mm -hmm. Okay, the resurrection of Jesus is one reason why we praise God. The Palm Sunday is another reason why. Multiplication of the loaves and fishes is another reason why we praise God. Jesus is the light of the world. And also that Jesus was born to us. Oh yes, that's one reason we praise God. The commandments that God gives to us is another reason for praise. That God saved us, that God saved Noah during the flood is another reason why we praise God. And for creation, why there are all kinds of reasons to praise God, aren't there? Yes, there are. Here, you want me to, I don't know if I can get away with this, but there we go, gotcha, all right. And for kids, too, there's a reason to praise God. 
It's exactly right. Especially the one they don't cry when you pick them up. Yeah. Not, not all scared, huh? Very good. Okay, so we have all these reasons for praising God. And God wants us to come often in prayer. Well, you've grown a little bit. I can feel that. Okay. <laughs> all right, so God wants us to come often in prayer. And let's just emphasize that for our prayer, we'll just start out with praise. That's a good way to approach God, just starting out with praise. And I'd like to uh, have a prayer of praise then, okay? All right, let's pray. Lord, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all the blessings. For all the blessings that we see in our church windows. That we see in our church windows. And in our lives. And in our lives. Many of them. Many of them. Amen. Amen. Okay, you're going to get a chance to talk in that microphone too. I'll just start getting you used to it. There you go. Okay, you can uh, head for your, uh, your seats now, okay? Very good. Do you have something, Eddie? Huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, all right. Okay, we're, uh, we're going to talk a bit about prayer today. The scripture talked about the, the end times and how people will spend time on that, thinking that they know when the end times are coming. And prayer is a great thing to spend time on rather than that, because uh, I have a special... Uh, I have a special uh, thought in relation to that because I have a friend who sends me information about the end times every time we have a disaster. A disaster happens and he sends me all of this about this is the end times, it's coming. Well, the scripture tells us that maybe we don't have to worry about that so much because many people will speak of it, but quite often, most often, uh, we're wrong. No, as we come before God, uh, actually we wait on God's time for those things. And as we do, we are constant in prayer. Our first thoughts should be to go to God in prayer, maybe in the morning, at meals, in the evening. Our first thought should always be, you know, I want to talk to God today. I want to talk to God today because I enjoy talking to God so much, not just because I have a need, but because I enjoy talking to God so much. Now, I already mentioned uh, in the announcements that my first thought when I see a chocolate bar, you know, in a uh, trunk or treat, is uh, one of great pleasure and uh, how soon I can have some or all of it. When our favorite team is playing, our first thought is their victory. First thoughts tell us a lot about our priorities, what we like, what we want to do. And if God is our first thought in every day, then in fact, what we want to do is have fellowship with God, to talk to God as if we were walking with a close friend. Remember Adam and Eve spoke with God in the cool of the evening in the Garden of Eden. Every evening they got together and they talked and they walked and it was wonderful. We can still talk and walk with God in prayer and we can make that a habit, actually make that a habit to talk and walk with God in prayer, to, to have God as our first thought. You know how it is if you're looking forward to something, you'll have as your first thought whatever that might happen to be. You wake up in the morning and, yes, you're thinking about that right away. Well, in relation to God, God can be our first thought. We can't wait to have a conversation with God. And like I told the children, 
We can praise God for all kinds of things because God gives us all kinds of blessings. And one of the blessings that we have is that through prayer, we can make a difference. We can make a difference. And these days, particularly, hurricanes, hostility between nations, random shootings, all of these things are occurring, but these prayers to God, walking with God, having God constantly before us as we walk through this world can help. Think about many, many people praying about the things that the world faces, praying for comfort for victims. Think about the impact that those prayers would have in relation to God. If there are many millions of people offering prayer to God, we can make a difference We can make a difference. By doing that, by telling other people that we do that, we can encourage other people to be constant in prayer. People will say, there's nothing I can do. And you can say, you can pray. You can pray. But some people may return the idea, well, you know, that's only a last resort. It isn't. You'd walk with God every day. I used to work, while I was in graduate school, I used to work in a maintenance department in a hospital for, for a job while I was uh, working in graduate school on my degrees. And we had a crusty old fella in there who was always trying to fix this old ironer that we had for the sheets because there was always something going wrong with it. And finally, they had a sprocket on that thing that he just could not get off. And he growled at somebody, well, we better get Milo in here so he can pray over it. Last resort. Last resort. Actually, prayer should be our first thought, our first resort. And then things uh, actually uh, get much better. We, We... We really see that a lot of things clear out of the way, a lot of problems clear out of the way, and uh, our prayers are acted upon by God. Prayers as our first thought, being constant in prayer. Being constant in prayer does make a difference. If you want to make a difference in world affairs, and I know people want to make a difference because you can go to hy V and sit in the coffee shop and notice how people want to discuss world affairs and make a difference. You can make a difference in prayer. You can make a very big difference in prayer, as a matter of fact. Sometimes we think we are so small that uh, we wouldn't really be able to make a difference, but keep in mind who we have an audience with. We have an audience with God. If people have an audience with a world leader, that's a great thing. We have an audience with the one who created everything. Can we make a difference? Yes. God hears the prayer of those who are righteous and answers. The Bible tells us that. God hears our prayers, understands our human condition, and loves us enough to hear our prayers and do something about it. Our prayers do make a difference because God loves us so much. If God loved us enough to send his son to die for us on our behalf, then if we offer a prayer about world affairs, about small things in our lives, God will be able to answer that prayer and willing because God is highly motivated by love. And we should persist in prayer. Persist in prayer. We constantly ask for what we're praying for. You see, we might think that, okay, if we ask God for something, that's enough. We have this kind of vending machine idea of God. Okay, we put in our prayer quarter, we pull the lever, the sandwich should fall out. But that's not the way it is with God. We have a relationship with God like we have a relationship with people. With people, you ask several times, most often. With God, it's the same way. 
God expresses love. A vending machine doesn't express love. Sometimes I think God wants us to come to God more and more often and withholds until we come more and more often because God likes to see us. God loves us so much so that we don't just come to God when we need something, but we come to God often. And God, because of that, has the, the joy of our presence more often. And Jesus told a story in relation to this. It's kind of an interesting story. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with pleas, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The last question is a very important question. When the Son of Man comes, when Jesus comes the second time, will he find people praying? Will he find people praying? People often wonder, why things don't happen, why good things don't happen. Most often, it's because we were not constant in prayer, not going before God, not persisting in prayer. Most often, it's because we got busy and we didn't have room in our life for prayer, or we discounted how powerful prayer is. God loves us intensely. If we ask for something, God pays attention. We do make a difference. If we persist in prayer, we do make a difference. And God does answer according to God's will. So we do make a difference if we persist. Just like this widow who came before this judge constantly. If this judge would grant her, her petition, God who loves us intensely will surely grant ours. We care. We care about the victims of the hurricanes, and we pray that they might have help. We care about the victims in Vegas, and we pray that they might have help and that things might change so that those things do not occur. We pray to make a difference. We have a responsibility to pray as Christians in this world. The world depends on us to pray. We pray because we care. God cares for us intensely, and we care about others intensely, the victims of the hurricanes, the victims in Vegas. We care intensely, and we pray to amplify the good that our service to God does. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about that amplification You may think of yourself as very, very small. And indeed, we are small. We get tired easily. Our our knowledge is limited. Although some people would say their knowledge is not so limited, as you know. But nevertheless, we may think of ourselves as small. So where are we going to find an amplifier? You notice when I'm speaking, my voice is amplified. So it fills the whole church. Where are we going to find an amplifier for our smallness, uh, the smallness that we have, the weakness? We're going to find it in God. We see that actually in the windows that we have over here. We see that our good works can be multiplied by what God does. 
The disciples, for example, only had a couple of fish and a few loaves at some point, and they had a big crowd. We see in the window here the fish and the loaves. And they said, well, they said to Jesus, send the people to town because we don't have enough to feed them here. And Jesus said, have them sit down. Jesus started to break apart the bread and portion out the fish and kept going and kept going. That was amplified. Your prayer is amplified. Your good deeds are amplified by God. They're amplified and they fill the whole world. So it's not just one little thing you do because God will make that a greater thing. We pray because we want to make a difference. God amplifies the difference that we make. We pray because we care. God amplifies that caring so that it is more and more impressive to people who see it and who benefit from it. And we pray in that amplification that uh, God's grace may be visited upon people. God's grace and God's help. <clears throat> Prayer makes what we do more powerful, more effective than we could ever dream. God has the power to multiply that help immensely. You know, there's another example that we can use in relation to that. Have you ever uh, been raising funds and you have a person who says, well, I'll tell you what, if you raise $1,000... I'll give you $10,000 toward your cause. Well, better yet, you raise, let's just scale it down to what we can really do as people, uh, being weak people and so forth. If you raise $25, I'll give you $10,000. Well, that's amplification. God does that same thing. God does that same thing in relation to what we do. The church has a powerful impact upon the world in relation to that. No nation is able to do that sort of thing. I don't care how much aid that they give, unless they give it in the name of God, which will make that difference. But we also, because God amplifies things, because God responds with power and caring, power and caring together, because God amplifies things and responds with incredible caring, we have thankfulness as part of our prayer. We're thankful, first of all, that we have the privilege to pray. We have the privilege to pray. And we can do so publicly in this nation. It is a grand privilege to be able to stand before God and pray. Sometimes we forget, however, to pray. And it seems sometimes to us that, uh, that God has, does things, yes, but, but we want to see specifically what's, what's going on. And the uh, poetry of footprints kind of gives an illustration of that. Um, because sometimes we don't actually see everything that God does when God amplifies the good things that we do. In footprints, um, there are two sets of footprints in the sand. And then the person who's uh, observing those footprints notices one set of footprints in the sand. And turns to God and says, what happened? You were walking with me, now you're not walking with me. What's going on? And God said, I was carrying you. I was carrying you. See, sometimes we need to be carried, and God provides the strength that we need. God amplifies the goodness that we do, provides the strength that we need. And in adversity, sometimes carries us thankfulness. In our thankfulness, we see that. In our thankfulness, we see that God magnifies what we do. In our thankfulness, we see the beauty of sunsets and all the good things that God gives to us. 
The psalmist does this in Psalm 19 when he says the following, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hand. Day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voices are not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth their words to the end of the world. In our prayers, we offer praise to God out of a deep thankfulness for what God has done for us. So our first thought becomes serving God in prayer. It's a way to serve God. It's one of the easiest ways to serve God. It is very pleasant after a while when it becomes a habit to come before God in prayer. And then serving God in that way, we become empowered by God's Spirit. What do we become empowered for? People seek power all the time, but but what is the power that we have with God? The power is to serve. You see, prayer is an avenue for the Spirit to come into our lives so that we can serve by telling other people about Jesus Christ and the, and the good that they can have in their lives, the wonderful servanthood they can have also, the good that they can have in their lives. You see? It's an avenue for the Spirit so that we're empowered to tell people the good things that we have. Prayer opens us up to the Spirit. How else are we going to... Sometimes the Spirit surprises people and comes into their lives unexpectedly, like the Apostle Paul. But prayer is an open door. And the Spirit comes in and moves us and helps us to be effective servants of God by spreading the good news of the gospel. That all people need to do is surrender to God. All people need to do is walk and talk with God. And they'll experience the intensity of God's love and the joy of being a servant of God and the joy of constantly walking with God in prayer. When we in prayer open ourselves to the Spirit, the Spirit empowers us to tell others and changes their hearts. And they walk with us. And there are more prayers. And the world is transformed and changes. Amen. listening to St. Paul United Church of Christ, 2030 Plank Road, Keokuk. Join our worship service at 10 a.m. with fellowship hour immediately following. Until next week, may God bless.